Hello, my creeplings. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Seeing as how it's February and the first half of the month is uh, devoted to that lovely holiday, Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, we're going to do a contrast and compare. Original versus uh, remake for My Bloody Valentine. Um, I had never seen either one of these all the way through until I sat down and watched them for this. The original My Bloody Valentine, I don't think I'd ever seen at all. Maybe bits and pieces when I was really little. And then the 2009, 2009 remake, I've seen bits and pieces of on like Showtime and HBO and stuff. Um... So, I'm just going to jump right into this. Again, this is kind of a new format. This might be a longer video. I am literally shooting from the hip here. I've got the notes, like I always do. Um, I am going to say both movies were enjoyable. I think whether or not you prefer one versus the other is really going to depend on how old you are and when you grew up. And I'll explain that here in a second. <clears throat> as a quick little bit of background. Um, the first one was released in 1981. It is your typical 80s proto-slasher. Um, Paramount jumped on the bandwagon with this one and released it uh, because Friday the 13th did so well. At least that's how I understand it from my notes. The 2009 is a slicker, updated remake for that, you know, newer generation, that 20-something I was right at the tail end of. That were really popular, I think, what, from around 2005 to 2015 when people just finally decided enough is enough and we want new stuff, not remakes. So, we've got, that's what's going for. The basic story is very, very similar for both of them. You have a minor killing people on Valentine's Day in a local mine. Um, reasonings are different in each story. Um, so I'll just do a quick overview of the first one. And I'm sorry, you're going to be seeing me do a lot of looking to the side of the notes and looking down because it's hard to keep these, to keep my points separate without that. And I really don't have a spot behind me to like write it big enough where I can read it over the lights. Plus looking into the lights kind of gives me that blind eye thing. So, quick overview of My Bloody Valentine 1981. This was a completely Canadian production. And, um, if you listen to it, you can tell. There's a very distinct Canadian accent. I'm not putting this down because apparently I get this accent occasionally. Be being from Northwest Ohio, we're kind of close and we, have, we tend to go up into Canada to go hunting and things like that. So I have picked up some pronunciations that I have been told sound severely Canadian. Um, this was shot, I want to say, in Nova Scotia. So you do have that kind of thicker accent from that area in some of the actors. It was not unenjoyable. I actually found it kind of cute. Um, the wardrobe is very dated. <laughs> very dated. You definitely know you're watching a movie from 1981. Um, but again, very enjoyable. The effects in this one, especially considering they are um, all practical effects, very good. We got some very good kills in this. To make this, the story, to boil it down, um, there is a tradition of a Valentine's Day dance in this town called Valentine's Bluff. Up until the modern, the present day. 20 years previous, there was a mine explosion because two um, supervisors cut out early to go to the Valentine's Day dance. And there was only one miner that survived after being trapped for like six days or something. He went nuts. Long, short, long, the, long story short. Um, that character's name was Harry Warden. Um, the next year... Harry, still, go, still nuts, um, kills the two supervisors that were responsible for the explosion that um, got him trapped in the mine. And he had 
left a warning, don't ever do this again or I will be back. And the town has had it passed into legend, blah, blah. Well, in 1981, the current miners, the current mayor and, and other townspeople have decided, well, you know, Harry's got to be gone, dead. Nothing's happened for 20 years. We're going to have this Valentine's Day dance because these miners work hard for us. Totally understand that. Um, but then the killings start. Um, we get a really good one, uh, with someone's left in the, killed and left in a dryer. Crispy, oh, and the, the guy who plays the sheriff. Now, I don't know any of these people. These are all Canadian actors from the late 70s, early 80s. There's only one I recognized, and she did some of the Anna Green Gable stuff that was on the Disney Channel and PBS all the time when I was growing up. That's the only actress I recognized. So I'm not going to bring up names. I'll bring up characters and that's about it. So the dryer incident, uh, the guy who played the sheriff like totally sold the fact that he smelled something nasty. So kudos to you, dude. Um, everybody's pairing up. We have a little love triangle with, I think he's a current foreman. His name is Axel. A girl named Sarah and her previous boyfriend i believe his father is the owner of the mine he went away for a while to go try and make something of himself it didn't work so he came back and is working in the mine his name is tj or jt tj tj so there's a little love triangle going on with those three um but again they canceled the, the dance because of the the death of the of some of the townspeople we open up with a really good <laughs> Apparently this female miner decides she's going to get it on with her mine partner and it's not who she thinks it is and she ends up stripping down to her skivvies and getting impaled on an axe. It's a really good kill right out the gate. So you know you're in for a good slasher when that happens. So we have Dryer Death and this guy, this Harry Warden, or who they think is Harry Warden, um, is collecting their, like, harvesting their hearts and putting them in candy boxes. It's gross. Um... So they cancel the dance, but the miners and their girlfriends decide, well, we're still going to have a party. We'll just have it at the mine in the rec room. Idiots. Um, there's a bartender who was retired from the mine, who was one of the, the workers that got Harry out. He keeps warning him, don't do this. Don't. He kind of is like the uh, guy in Friday the 13th on the bicycle, the town drunk, but he's not a drunk. He gets killed. Trying to set up a, a prank on them to warn them off. Um, that one's got a nice pickaxe. You're going to get a lot of impalings. A lot of pickaxe through the neck and eyeballs and stuff. One by one, these kids... I say kids, they're all probably in their 20s, but they're younger. These kids keep getting picked off. Some of them are dumb enough to go down into the mine, and that's where all the good chases happen. Uh, we have Death by Scalding. Where a guy's head gets pushed into a, a boiling pot of hot dogs. So I've been calling it Death by Hot Dog. That was a good one. We have an impaling on a shower. Beheadings. There's some good effects in this one and some great kills. Death by Nail Gun. That's another good one. Subtle, but good. We get to the end of it. And Sarah and TJ are the only survivors of... The group that went down in the mine. I think there's still a handful of the, of the the group that was left at the party that are still alive. I, I, I didn't get a kill count. There was a lot. I didn't get a survivor count because there was a decent amount. Um, but you find out it's not Harry Warden. And sorry, twist for a movie that's over 20 years old. It's actually Axel. Axel kind of went nuts because his father was one of the supervisors that Harry Warden killed. Okay. So. It's pretty much a straightforward story. The only sub-story you've got is the love triangle. Would I watch this movie again? Yes. If I'm doing a holiday marathon or if I'm doing a, um, switch my notes, sorry, um, an 80s, you know, classic 80s slasher, or if I'm doing a remake versus original night, I would definitely recommend this one. I got my copy off of the internet database, or in internet archive. Why do I do that? Internet archive. Anytime I say internet database, no, I mean the internet archive. Um, there was an unrated version put out by Lionsgate I could not get a hold of. 
Um, cause this movie's got a bit of an infamous backstory of having a lot of it, a lot of the gore cut. Um, because if I remember this correctly, and if my timeline is correct in my head, Paramount did really good with Friday the 13th and started picking up slasher movies and making them. Well, at the time this was in production, Friday the 13th was still out in theaters and they were getting a lot of backlash for the gore, so they kind of wanted to tone this one down a little bit so they wouldn't have so many problems. Um, so that has been, some of that footage has been re-put in, in this unrated version that I have, again, I don't know if I got a copy of that or, but what I saw was pretty good. So yes, would definitely recommend My Bloody Valentine 1981 to anybody who's into the genre, who's just interested in, you know, Canadian filmmaking at the time. Um, so Lionsgate gets a hold of it in the early 2000s when they're about, you know, they're starting to do their wash of remakes and they're starting to bring their um, name out as a horror house, basically. Um, they change this one a little bit. They bring it from Canada to, I believe, Pennsylvania. This one has a big, like, names in the cast. We have Jensen Ackles, you know, Mr. Dean Winchester himself. And that kind of made this hard for me to watch because I just kept thinking of Dean the entire time because I was with that show for, when I say with that show, I didn't work with them, but I watched that show 15 seasons. Yes, I got in on it late, but when I got in on it, I binged it and then I just stayed for every season. So... To me, Jensen Ackles is one of two things. He's either the soap opera hunk from Days of Our Lives in the 90s, which, eh, he was young, I was young when I was watching it, I'm over it. Or he's Dean Winchester. Watching him in other things, there's always that kind of, in the background, that touch of Dean that I'm always looking for. Which sometimes, and this is one of my faults, definitely kind of touches my view of, of a performance sometimes. Um... But we have other names. Tom Atkins was the retired sheriff. Now, any of you who are fans of 80s horror know Tom Atkins. I keep saying I'm going to do this one, and I promise I will do it. But, like, he was in Night of the Creeps. Uh, he was in the third Halloween movie, the only one that doesn't feature Michael Myers. He was in that one. He's done a bunch of stuff. Anytime I see Tom Adkins, I know I'm in for at least a few good quips and a good badass. Even though he's getting up there in age, he's still a good badass. Um, Kevin Teague, or Teagy, um, plays one of the uh, foremen at the mine. He's a big wig at the mine. You recognize him from the original Roadhouse as the owner of the Double Deuce. He usually plays kind of slick willy characters or, you know, guys you don't trust. Uh, he was the, this is a kid's movie, but everybody who's my age uh, that had the Disney Channel would probably definitely remember Newsies. He was the boys' home uh, director in that. I've seen him in a billion different things. He's one of those character actors that shows up to play a certain part. And it's usually someone who's a bit skeezy or oily or maybe not quite as straightforward. This wasn't so bad on the skeezy and oily. There was a little bit of not so straightforward. And, you know, you'll find that out watching the film. Or if I mention it here. Um, Jamie King uh, plays one of the female leads. Um, she's... I don't haven't seen her in much recently. But again, my recent focus my focus on recent recent stuff hasn't been very good lately um but i know she's done a couple of other horror movies so she's kind of familiar with the genre um and i think that's about all the names that i can uh name uh the guy who plays the younger sheriff what's his name kerr smith i have seen him in other places but i just don't he, not very memorable to me, but again, that's a me thing. You guys might have his whole filmography memorized, but that's a me thing. I also wasn't watching a lot of movies at this point in time, um, because I just wasn't interested in what was coming out and what was coming out. I usually just waited for it to hit HBO or Showtime. So, again, we go back to 
the basic character or a basic story with these characters. Jensen Ackles plays Tom, the mine owner's son. Um, Kerr Smith plays Axel, who ends up becoming the town sheriff instead of a mine foreman. Jamie King is the Sarah character that's part of the love triangle. Um, this one has a couple of, like, B plots, C plots. <sighs> Excuse me. Got a little something going on here again. I, I, the weather in Ohio has just been up and down and up and down. It's making everybody go nuts. Um, so... Tom isn't coming back because he failed to do whatever he was planning on doing. Let me, okay, let me back up. Tom was a young mine worker in, uh, I think they said the, the, the opening bit in 1997. So 10 years, or 1996, so 11 years previous. He forgot to bleed the lines and there was an explosion, which caused Harry Warden, this character shows back up again, uh, as the miner, um, caused a cave in with him and six other people. Now, here's where things get different. Harry killed his co workers that were trapped with him, supposedly to save his own ox, you know, to keep more oxygen. Uh, he ended up in a coma, and a year later, he wakes up, and in 1997, so this is 10 years before the current parts of the movie current parts of the movie um there's a party on valentine's day outside of the tunnel where that happened the tunnel's been shut down from what i understand and harry comes back and slaughters a shit ton of people he wakes up from his coma he slaughters people in the hospital he slaughters people at the party and i believe the only survivors were axel his current girlfriend at the time irene sarah and tom um we get some some interesting effects because it looks like it's a mixture of practical effects cleaned up with CGI. Um, they're all very slick. This is not that 80s homemade look. This is that mid-2000s. We figured out how CGI works and we're going to use it. Still nice to look at, though. Um, let's see, a lot of impalings, a lot of... There's a shovel that sh shears somebody in half from, I think, the neck or the mouth. I can't remember off the top of my head. So... After that, Tom disappears for 10 years. He only comes back to sell his share, or he's a, he owns most of the shares of the mine, so he's selling it to an outside company. He's just in town to sign the papers. Well, Axel has become sheriff. He and Irene have broken up, and Axel married Sarah. So there's the love triangle still going on there. Um, the miner comes back, and let's see. Just goes on a killing spree. We got Irene. We've got the little person. And I mean like a little person. The actress's name is Selene Luna. She does um, a lot of touring with... Oh, God. I cannot remember. Some dan Something dandy. Um, but he was on America's Got Talent. And he does operatic stuff dressed as a French courtier. She worked with him. She's done other movies where they need little people. Um, not to be confused with the adult film star Bridget the Midget. Not the same person. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah. Rips through the motel. Uh, we have... The sheriff's having an affair with his wife's co-worker. The co-worker ends up dead. Uh, we have a revisit of the dryer death with the housekeeper, though. I mean, they're just dead everywhere. Um, now, there's a handful of people. And when I say a handful of people, it's the sheriff, his dad, who was the sheriff at the time, Tom Atkins' cop character, and Kevin Teague's mine owner, mine foreman character that knew that, li that Harry Warden was killed that night in 1997. They buried him in an unmarked shallow grave. Well, they go to go check the grave out and it's empty. So now they're all panicking. Um, again, to get to the meat of the matter, it turns out Harry Warden is dead. 
Um, and Tom actually went nuts that night and had spent seven years in a psychiatric hospital. And the minor was a split personality for him. So he was going, Tom was killing everybody in Harry Warden's outfit that he dug up. You find this out all at the end. Again, spoilers for a movie that's almost 20 years old now. <laughs> um, good solid performances. Uh, I liked the extra addition of the affair and switching it, you know, who killed who. Uh, they did revisit, like I said, some of the, the the dryer death. Tom Atkins, great performance as always. I'm going to say that I was not as big of a fan of the effects in this one. Just simply because I like my old school practical effects. Um, these seemed a little too slick to me. And you might hear me say that a lot when we review newer horror films is how slick they looked and how like like me as a horror movie connoisseur as someone who has watched horror movies for most of my life um definitely from you know my mid-teen years up to now I prefer that mostly practical look um you know, but like there are certain effects houses like, you know, Greg Nicotero's uh, outfit and like I think the Kyoto Brothers, Kyoto Brothers are doing this now too. And a handful of others that will blend the two and it's seamless. This one, you kind of look at it and go, okay, that looked too good to be true. That had to have been cleaned up a little too much in CGI and post. Um, I'm not saying it took me the enjoyment out of the film for me, but my, again... If your brain works like mine does, it kind of sometimes just is a little overcritical. My, my little voice goes, Nye -nye -nye -nye. this is why I can't watch anything with Greek or Roman or Norse mythology, because <laughs> don't get me started on watching Thor, all right? I, I Yeah, um, but I digress. So if I had to choose, I probably would watch the original over the remake. Um, I don't think we're going to have a scale for, you know, OG versus new, but I think on this one, they're pretty neck and neck. This one comes down to which, when it comes to which is the better movie. My enjoyment of the older one was a little bit more because I like older movies. Um, if I were younger and I had never grown up watching the Friday the 13th and the, uh, low budget straight to video slashers and you know some of the, that other stuff I probably would have enjoyed My Bloody Valentine 2009 a little bit better the other thing about My Bloody Valentine 2009 it was shot for 3D so there are a few shots that don't read well or read as well in a regular 2D format uh, there's one where a guy goes and punches and misses somebody and cracks his hand on a mirror or some glass. And the shot is actually, here's the camera, here's the glass. So it's the fist going into the camera. So I'm assuming that with the 3D, which I didn't watch. I don't usually watch movies in 3D. Real D gives, my, gives me headaches. Um, it looks like the fist is coming right at you like that. There's a car wreck where a um, tree branch goes through and it's coming right at you uh, a lot of explosions where things are coming right at you which i mean on, in 3d that was probably really fracking cool but on 2d it kind of just reads as cheesy so that was probably something else that took me out of the enjoyment of it but again i think this really <clears throat> depends on what kind of movies you like if you are a connoisseur of old cheesy movies you're gonna like that first one better if you're more of the new school horror, you're going to like the newer one better. I could watch either one. I would probably watch either one again, um, depending on what I'm doing. And, you know, if I need a Jensen Ackles fix or if, again, I'm hosting a party where we're, you know, fuck Valentine's Day, that kind of thing. Either one is good. So, yeah, that's my recommendation. Pick one. I think you're good either way. Just depends on you know, what your preferences are. Um, so 
I'm going to ask a big favor of you guys, just simply because this was, you know, something that I had thought about doing. I went ahead and I did this one. What do you think of original versus new? You know, OG versus remake and this type of format. Would you like me to split them into two videos, one per movie, and then do a wrap up at the end of the second video? Um, so that I can get more in depth with the films. I may end up doing that if I end up doing the Night of the Living Dead because those are some that yeah both of those the original and the remake were some big movies and those will both be very long videos if I do them the way I think I'd end up doing them or are you just not interested in contrast and compare let me know I that just so that I know that I'm not wasting my time when I could be watching other movies that you guys would rather rather me do um and I'll take suggestions for movies below you know comment sections always open and thank you guys who have commented. You've been so nice. I've only gotten one kind of not so good comment and I really just ignored it and said I don't care. Um, and all of you who've been here from the beginning, like my guys and girls from work, hi, you know, Al, Dawn, everybody, thanks. You guys, this is really making my day that I'm starting to get engagement and let's keep it up, you know? I am more than happy to take constructive criticism. I am more than happy to take suggestions. Help, help me help you have a more entertaining time. Um, I know this is not very produ produced. This is not very slick. This is just kind of me talking to you guys. I don't get to talk horror movies a lot. This is my outlet. My husband's not, like I said, he said it himself. He's not a huge horror movie guy. Um, and you can't, you know, talk at work all the time. They don't pay you to yap. They pay you to work. So, you know, this is my way of getting my opinions out there, maybe interacting with people via comment. So, yeah, help, help me out, guys. Help me help you have an entertaining time. Um, help me help you find recommendations. I am very much looking forward, though, to continuing the, this thing. I don't think I'm going to do another holiday-themed one for February. Um... I th I've got a couple of things on deck that I, I have been wanting to watch. Um, and I'm going to apologize now. It's probably going to be a bit Raimi heavy until March. Just simply because um, of the con coming up. Uh, might talk about Blair Witch as well. Because all three of those guys are going to be there at the con. I did get my tickets. I did get my hotel uh, booked. So... Maybe in April, you guys will see a vlog from Three Days at the Con. We'll see because I have no idea what my editing skills are going to be like. Um, might just get snippets here and there and like an overview of me talking to you about, you know, because I haven't been to a con in 10 years. God, has it been 10 years now? It might be more than that. Jesus. Um, cons aren't cheap though, and it's hard to get time off when you're working retail. So, um, but yeah, if we, if you guys like the con idea, let me know. I'm more than, again, I'm more than happy to, to work with changes to help you guys enjoy th this interaction. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to leave it on that note. I'm going to again say thank you for everybody who's been so kind and so supportive it's, you know, this is just a hobby for me, but it's a little time consuming. And at least knowing that somebody's out there enjoying it makes it better for me. It really does. I don't feel like I'm talking to a wall all the time. <laughs> Even though technically I kind of am. <clears throat> but I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, my Bloody Valentine 1981, My Bloody Valentine 3D 2009. Both decent films, both recommended. One's not greater than the other unless you have a preference. So on that note, I'm going to say a good night, my creeplings, and I'll see you next time. Bye.